Hi, my name is Farbod. I'm a filmmaker, digital marketer, and a coach. And in today's video, I wanted to talk about how you can start your videography business entering 2021. And I wanted to also specifically talk about some of these mistakes that you need to be avoiding in order to reach your goal faster. Now, one thing that a lot of people have assumption is that you need to go to film school to get your education, you need to get a certificate, and in fact none of this stuff is actually required the only thing that really matters is that you need to be extremely as extremely good at what you do and you need to solve that problem can you solve this problem in the market that's what really matters and you know i went that road where you know had to like get a degree in film school spending thousands and thousands of dollars to do that but for you, I wouldn't recommend it because it takes three years amount of time, two to three years or even more. And it could also mean that you have to spend a lot of money. And for the being for the situation where you have to like get your return on it, it's a bit tricky because you have to do all these works, um, your assignments and whatnot. But, you know, it's not really needed. OK you can learn this stuff online in fact there are courses out there online there's youtube tutorials i personally have my own course and coaching program that i provide if you do happen to need those services feel free to book in a 30 minutes call with me on my link and uh, we can see what sort of uh, package or solution works for you now the next thing i wanted to point out is the tip number one is that you have to be good at what you do now if you really suck at you know filming editing color grading directing do you think like people are gonna hire you and they're gonna pay you good money chances are less so what you need to do you need to get good at what you do all right so whether that's cinematography whether that's editing directing so in fact like I would suggest like learn all those things so that you don't necessarily have to outsource an editor you don't necessarily have to outsource another a videographer unless the profit allows right so unless the client's paying good money so that you can outsource it but when you're starting out you want to be a one-man band and the reason why i say that is because you know you be able to keep the profit and not only that and you have to you gain skills in multiple different areas and once you're expanding you can outsource videographer or editors and um, if you have a partner or a friend who you are starting with by all means do it uh, i had situation where i had friends who i hired on um, based on the sort of like clients that i used to get but it all really depends on your business um, especially if you're starting out i would suggest start out as a freelancer um, get good at what you do and start targeting those industry or people that you want to be working with now the next point that i want to make out is um is niching down all right so niching down is very important because you know if you become an expert in one field and be able to charge high premium prices for that area then it's so much easier to scale to full-time or six-figure business now I've had friends who do wedding filmmaking and they're able to make full time or six figure. And um, I personally didn't go that path because wedding really didn't much excite me. However, I've helped people, I uh, helped friends, um, just got hired a couple of times as a second shooter to film weddings or edit weddings. But it wasn't really my thing. And I didn't really like. Um, working in that industry and what I really liked was you know for me it was like I wanted to help people grow their marketing grow their business and that's what I stumbled across you know digital marketing and filmmaking and that's something that I'm trying to build up right so niching down is very important so become expert in one thing is it real estate videography is it commercial videography is it a wedding videography so start with that and get really good at doing that and that's how you attract the target audience or the target market in that particular industry 
Now, the last and the final tip that I have is basically you need to have the basic gears to get started. So this is relating back to getting good at what you do, which is, you know, the knowledge and then the experience. And then you also may need some basic gears to get started. Make sure you have uh, a decent entry level or a good mirrorless camera or make sure you have your audio equipment, your gimbal and all those sort of things. Now, a lot of times these are investments that you have to make at the very beginning. Uh, it might be a bit hard if you don't have any uh, stream of income through videography. However, um, if you are starting a videography business, I assume that you know, you're able to fund it through um, uh, your support from other jobs or work or family and whatnot. But you know, you have to do that. It's the risk that you have to make and um, the investment, uh, the return investment will happen as well once you start getting some clients. And um, that's it for today. That's basically how you start uh, your videography business. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of more elements into it um, that I wouldn't be able to go more in depth. However, there's some of the mistakes that you want to avoid, especially when you're starting out. Uh, a lot of time people say work for exposure and you know at the beginning you might do a couple of those but you know in my opinion in my um, experience like they don't necessarily uh, lead to many places because you know a lot of times the client may come and approach you and they say hey will you be able to work for exposure hey um we have like 10,000 followers we give you a massive exposure we have all these followers you know you might get businesses or clients, whatever. And the problem with that is that a lot of time, it doesn't really work out that well. Because one, the client underestimates your value or your worth as a creative uh, individual. And, you know, it's a lot harder. And um, and they, they want to keep using you and take advantage of you. And that's not really good. Unless in a situation where you want to build up your fashion portfolio, that's what I did, like, for example, I, um, I shot different models uh, for free, so, um, and I just got the portfolio in exchange. Those are fine, and especially if that's the industry that you're going for, you can do that. But, you know, just keep in mind, a lot of time people will approach you and they say, just work for exposure, especially even if you're really good. You know, you develop your uh, skill set for years, there are people who would do that. And uh, you should have the ability to say, no, uh, I won't be able to do that, unfortunately. And that's where you educate the client that, hey, listen, this is the professional skill set. The camera could cost money. My skills and experience cost time and development. And uh, I won't be able to do this, but I know there might be a lot of like aspiring videographers who will be doing this because I'm doing it as a business, right? So that's the answer. It's a simple no, uh, it could go a long way. and. The other mistakes that you basically want to avoid is comparing your work with people, okay? Now you go through stumble across uh, Instagram and you see all these amazing cinematic footages or um, highlights, show reels and whatnot, and you see yourself, you're like, you're not at that level, or you may not have those lenses and equipments, or your work is not as good as theirs. And it's okay to um, feel that way. And it happens a lot. It happened to me as well. So what you want to do is that you want to step away from that. You know, um, if other people's work doesn't influence and inspire you, instead, they're going to drain you down and you will be like in a negative um, downward um, comparison where you're comparing your work and you're feeling um, guilty or you're feeling shame that you know you're feeling a bit low that you know your work isn't as good as theirs and this is not a good thing so realize it and just move on because you know other people's work must inspire you not in a way that it you know brings you down so instead what I would suggest is develop your own style of videography um, get influenced but don't try to copy I mean, you can just uh, gain few um, style or look from them, but create your own, like develop it, like uh, develop your own style, right? So 
the way you like to grade, the way you like to shoot, and uh, stand out as a unique uh, videographer because the market is oversaturated and there's a lot of people, um, you know, basically price shoppers, I would say. Like a lot of clients, they say, hey, you know, this person shoots this video for $300, so why would I pay $500 for you, right? There's a lot of things and you want to be able to stand out. So anyhow, that's my suggestion and uh, I hope you have been able to take some notes and um, yeah, I'll speak to you in another video. Peace.